on March 6, 1944, 28,000 feet above Berlin, the 56th Fighter Group of the U.S. Army Air Forces engaged in the largest air battle yet seen over Europe. German fighters pulled into steep climbs, using the same escape tactic that had worked for over a year. But this time, the Thunderbolt stayed with them and opened fire. By the mission's end, 11 German aircraft were destroyed. Not a single P-47 was lost. Something had changed, and it wasn't the aircraft. It was the propeller. The P-47 Thunderbolt was powerful, but had one key flaw. Poor climb performance. Its engine produced 2,000 horsepower, but its narrow blade propeller, optimized for a high-speed flight, couldn't generate enough thrust at low air speeds. German fighters like the Falkenwolf 190 and Messerschmitt 109 could escape by climbing, and Thunderbolts couldn't follow. This gap cost lives and raised doubts about the P-47's frontline role. During the winter of 1943, Engineers at Curtis Wright and Hamilton standard race to fix the problem. The solution? Increase blade area to boost thrust at low speeds. Curtis proposed an elliptical wide blade with airflow smoothing cuffs, while Hamilton designed radical paddle-shaped blades that pushed air like oars and water. Both were effective in tests, offering major improvements in climb rate. By spring 1943, the Army approved both designs. Hamilton's propellers were installed on new P-47s built in New York, while Curtis's were used to retrofit existing aircraft in England. By early 1944, the 56 fighter group had fully transitioned to paddle blade Thunderbolts. Group commander Hubert Zemke quickly recognized a tactical shift. The improved climb allowed pilots to fight vertically engaging German fighters in spirals and reversals that were previously too risky. As more groups received upgraded aircraft, the Luftwaffe began to notice German pilots who tried to escape by climbing found Thunderbolts staying with them. Some believed they were facing a new American fighter. It wasn't until a down P-47 was examined that German intelligence realized the secret was a new propeller. They underestimated its impact, thinking it improved only takeoff, not combat. In February 1944, during Big Week, a massive bombing campaign, Thunderbolts equipped with paddle blades flew thousands of sorties. The Luftwaffe lost over 350 fighters. The Americans lost just 28. The propeller upgrade had turned the Thunderbolt into a capable vertical fighter. Pilots developed tactics like the vertical scissors, two P-47s engaging a German aircraft in climbing combat, bleeding its energy until it became an easy target. The new propeller also boosted ground attack capabilities. Thunderbolts could carry heavier loads, dive from lower altitudes, and climb away faster, reducing vulnerability. Between April and September 1944, they flew over 88,000 attack sorties with a loss rate under 1%. Many units even chose to keep their P-47s instead of switching to the longer-range P-51 Mustang, citing the Thunderbolt's ruggedness and versatility. The change showed in the numbers. In early 1944, before paddle blades were widespread, the kill ratio for American fighters was 1.8 to 1. By mid-year, it had risen to 3.2 to 1, and by the third quarter, 4.6 to 1. While improved training and increasing Allied numbers played a role, pilots repeatedly credited the new propeller with giving them the ability to match and defeat German fighters in vertical combat. On D-Day, June 6, 1944, Thunderbolts helped secure the skies over Normandy. The Luftwaffe managed fewer than 100 sorties, American fighters flew over 8,700. Thunderbolts intercepted and destroyed most German attempts to interfere. By late 1944, the P-47M model, combining paddle blade propellers with water injection engine boosts, could match any German fighter in climb. From January to December 1944, Thunderbolts destroyed over 3,800 German aircraft in Europe. 
with a kill ratio of 3.7 to 1. Yet their success was quickly overshadowed. As jet fighters emerged, most P-47s were retired or sold. The role of the paddle blade propeller in transforming the Thunderbolt was largely forgotten, but its impact was profound. It was not a revolutionary invention, but a smart, timely fix to a deadly problem. It turned a struggling aircraft into a top-tier fighter in just months. It also showed the power of American industry. Design, testing, production, and global deployment executed with incredible speed and scale. While German engineers understood the theory, they lacked the industrial capacity to adapt. American forces didn't wait for perfection. They implemented good solutions fast and at scale. The paddle blade propeller is a reminder that wars aren't won by breakthrough technologies alone, but by solving specific problems quickly and efficiently. By removing the Thunderbolt's greatest weakness, the paddle blade propeller helped establish the air superiority that made the invasion of Europe possible. It was a quiet innovation, born in engineering shops, not dogfights, but one that helped decide the outcome of the war.